Okay, welcome everybody. I think we're live. There's my thumb in the picture. Um, today I'm over here at the bagpipe table and I thought I would take a little bit of time to just go through some basic bagpipe hemp thought process and then I'll show you the technique that I would typically use to uh, apply hemp to my instrument when it's necessary. So a couple of important things pertaining to my thought process here. Number one, Bagpipe hemp, if you have any experience bagpiping, I would guess your experience has been the same, which is it's finicky, all right? So when we apply hemp to our bagpipe here, when we apply hemp to any one of these joints, all right, we're gonna find that day to day, everything changes quite a bit. And you could play, you could get things set up and one day it would be perfect. And then the next day it'll change. And that could be due to any number of reasons, but usually it's the relationship between the environment that exists inside your bag as you play. And as you play longer and longer, more and more moisture gets in there, but then maybe that is different than the environment going on outside of the bag. Maybe it rains uh, and that causes the hemp to swell up, or maybe it's really dry, which is the case right about now here, winter time in New York, things are starting to get really dry. I can tell my hygrometer is right there behind the screen and it's starting to creep downward in relative humidity. And so that can cause the hemp to get kind of loose on you overnight. So my point is it's finicky. So when it comes to hemping technique and what I want to do here, okay, what my golden rule is that whatever I do has to be fast. It can't take forever. So, um, a lot of people, I remember back in the day before they had this amazing pre waxed hemp, you used to have to do it by hand and that would take quite some time. Okay, but now they sell it waxed and so thing number one, I highly recommend just get waxed hemp. All right, unless it's something that you honestly really enjoy doing, spending lots of extra time applying uh, wax to hemp, um, which if that's the case for you, um, go for it. Um, I highly recommend just getting the pre waxed stuff. I've also heard of a lot of pipers that have seem to have success with hemp that's unwaxed or maybe some combination of the two. For me, uh, the unwaxed hemp just adds more finickiness, right? It adds more problems to the situation. So uh, I'm just going to use the waxed hemp. The great thing about the waxed hemp is as long as I have a roll or two uh, hanging around, it can be, I can be moments away from fixing whatever's wrong with my hemp and getting back to playing. And that's the big thing. Most of us don't have tons of time every day to play. We've got to make sure hemping is really easy to do. Okay. Um, and then as long as you have a knife, it's super easy to cut hemp. Although I would also say that uh, in just kind of like you're, you know, uh, flossing your teeth, right? A couple of wraps around here. You can just pull the hemp. You can actually live in most cases without a knife if you had to. So I love that. So keep, keep a roll of this wax stuff around. Maybe you prefer to hand wax it for some strange reason on your own, which uh, that works when you have a lot of time. But when you don't have a lot of time, I highly recommend not being too weird and religious and dogmatic about it. Just use some wax hemp when you need it, okay? And it's, it's always going to work out well for you. So anyway, let's go through some t technique now uh, with the hemp, okay? So here we have uh, my bagpipe, which was set up really well, but then I, uh, I unset it up earlier just uh, for cases of demonstration. Now, uh, it was probably a bad choice to use this uh, black hemp. However, I'm thinking that if I hold it up on this joint, uh, a little bit of black on yellow contrast might make it a little bit easier to see. But I am now starting to wonder uh, if it's going to be particularly visible. But uh, you know what? That's why they pay me the big bucks. We just got to go for it. So uh, the first thing when it comes to applying hemp here, a couple of thoughts. Number one, think about, think about how the joint is going to connect, right? So here we have a joint which I purposely made too loose for uh, purposes of this demonstration, right? It could be any one of your joints, including your reed seats, by the way, on your bagpipe. But just think about how the joint's going to come in. All right, I'm going to start hemping right here at the top because as the joint goes on, it's going to sort of like smush the hemp and push it down in that direction. If you start in the middle uh, or you start at the bottom, what you could end up with is uneven distribution. So that's the first thing that you're going to notice when I do this. Uh, the second thing is I'm going to be wrapping with my right hand. Okay, 
So my left hand's gonna be holding this. Okay, so get everything set up uh, so that it works for you. Now, with my left thumb, because again, I'm right-handed, with my left thumb, I'm gonna take a little bit of hemp here, and you might ha have trouble seeing it, but I'm gonna place it so that it's, uh, I guess you would say horizontal or po possibly vertical, but uh, it's, it's not in the, the way the hemp is gonna go. But I'm going to press my thumb down on that really, really tough, okay? Like you, you can't see, but I'm applying a lot of force there. And remember, I'm starting here at the top because that's the direction it's gonna be smushed when the joint comes on, okay? And now I'm gonna to start to wrap, cool? I'm gonna to start to wrap one or two or three wraps. And once you've done that, you can let go with the thumb. See, my thumb no longer has to hold on. But notice how I'm keeping the hemp extremely tight. As soon as I uh, let go of that tension of the string, I consider that basically ruined. See how it's gotten all loose on me and I can't really rely on it being tight. So uh, we're gonna start with our thumb, pressing it down. We're gonna start to wrap. And once we start wrapping, the tension has to remain tight the whole time that we have this joint. This is just the way I do it, okay? Quick and easy. Now, see, I've done several wraps here, okay? Now, what do you do? How do you cut it off? Do you have to tie some sort of weird slip knot or something? I don't do any of that. Call me, call me weird. Uh, I need it to be fast. I need it to be easy. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put some wraps on, and then as soon as I, as soon as I wanna test it, I just take my finger or my thumb here and I just hold it down nice and tight, as tight as I can. I'm gonna take the joint that needs to attach it and I'm going to put it on and I'm gonna start smushing that hemp, okay? Now that is already better, but it's still too loose, okay? So I wanna to continue to add hemp, okay? So I'm gonna take the top off. It's been smushed now, so I don't have to worry too much about tension, uh, but now I'm just gonna pick up where I left off. I'm gonna give it some more wraps my knife out of the way there so no one gets stabbed. Um, and then the hemp's kind of rolling around, okay? Keeping that tension nice and tight the whole time, never letting the tension of the hemp get loose. Okay, and again, I'm gonna press and hold with my finger, put this on, okay? And then now that's really nice and tight. This is my top base section. So I personally actually do like it quite tight. So um, let's start with that. Now, one of the things that I uh, first heard about uh, during a lecture Stuart Little was giving is that uh, now compressing the hemp down is something that you really want to do if you can, if you have time. If you don't have time, like let's say you're going to perform in just a few minutes, uh, don't worry about it. But if you can, if we can compress that hemp down, that's going to drastically decrease the amount of finickiness that the hemp is going to be you know, going through on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Because we're compressing it, we're squishing it down, and then uh, basically moisture is gonna have a harder time getting in and getting out of that hemp. So we should expect it to be steadier. So uh, the way Stuart showed it is he had like a two by four and he, he, um, he put it on a tabletop and he was able to compress it down. And the uh, people, uh, so one of the students at Dojo U made this incredible device that I'm quite fond of now. We call them hemp compressors. Um, contact us if you're interested. Uh, you don't need them, but they're very, very uh, handy tools. Um, and what they do is you can put it around the joint like this. Here, I'll show you. Uh, put it around that joint like this. It's just like a little thing or majig here. Uh, and I can apply a little bit of force and then I just twist it. And what that does is it smushes that new hemp fully into place and it applies force the whole way. And it's just really, really cool. I went the whole season in Scotland this year, I don't think I made a single hemp edit. Granted, the weather was really unusually uh, cooperative this year in terms of moisture. Uh, but anyway, of course, when I'm on camera, I get tangled up, but uh, there you go. So now I've compressed it, and what you might find after compression is that, uh-oh, see, the joints become loose because we've smushed it all down. Yeah, but that's okay. Uh, my hemp is still attached. Notice I haven't done any slip knots or anything, uh, anything to overcomplicate this process, so now I'm gonna go with more wraps. Okay, I'm gonna go with more wraps. I don't wanna cut the hemp or, or lose the end of it if I can avoid it. It might happen accidentally and that's okay. Uh, I don't wanna lose it if I can avoid it. Uh, before I even put it on, I'm just gonna go ahead and compress it down. Okay, and you can do this with your own tools or a two by four. It doesn't have to be these goofy, you don't need a 3D printed gadget uh, to get this done. I just 
kind of like that tool. Okay, and now it's definitely pretty good. I'm gonna do a couple more wraps. And again, where am I gonna do these wraps? Up toward the top, especially now that it's getting kind of tight. The smushing of the hemp is gonna come from the top, so we wanna just add a couple more layers up there at the top. You can put this on first. Okay, and I'm just pushing it in there. It takes a little bit of force. Yeah, I really like that. One more compression thing. Now, how do you do, when you're done hemping, how do you finish it? How do you uh, do that, you know, that funky slip knot? Okay, my answer is, I don't do it. I don't want a slip knot. Um, in the perfect world, I'll have a little tail that I could unwrap some of this hemp tomorrow if it turns out maybe I was a little uh, overzealous and maybe it got some moisture in it. So I'm actually not going to uh, use the slip knot at all. I'm just gonna leave this tail. Now, you may be wondering, Andrew, won't that look silly and dumb? Yeah, if I put, the, if I put it down like this and then ripped off the hemp, which I know, by the way, I'm totally recognizing that it might be hard to see this. If I just rip off the hemp from here, we'll end up with a little tail, which is kind of ugly, which doesn't bother me, but you know, for, for a nice performance or something, you don't want that hanging around. So I take this, about halfway off, and then I just rip the hemp off like that. And you could use your knife to cut it uh, if, you, if you'd like, if you'd like to be fancier, but that allows me uh, to more or less uh, just leave it like this and I don't have to worry too much about it. Now, that's quick and dirty. Maybe you wanna be fancier about how you do it, and that's totally fine. Just remember, in a pinch, if you're in the middle of a practice session and you realize you need a hemp edit, um, you want to be able to do that quickly and then keep playing. And that's for a number of reasons. Number one, we don't have a ton of time today to practice, let's say. But also, the longer you stop playing to do a hemp edit, the further your pipes are going to go, you know, let's say, flat, and you're not going to be in tune anymore. So any change you do make, you want it to be really quick. So that's my general philosophy. And then a little view into just the basic technique of how to get that done quickly, easily, and efficiently. And, re and remember, it's finicky you should expect to need to make changes, maybe not every day, uh, especially if you're playing your pipes every day, uh, but if you're not playing your pipes every day, or, um, or if you live in an environment like New York in the wintertime where it's like you're always sort of battling the elements, you can expect to have to do this all the time. So it's important that you kind of have a, a quick and easy plan that gets the job done right. So anyway, that's my spiel for today. That's my take on this. Uh, people have all sorts of interesting opinions when it comes to hemp. So let me hear about them in the comments. We're always, uh, you know, looking to learn new stuff and uh, hear about different ways people have been successful. So make sure you comment in on there. All right, that's it. That's my spiel for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if I can figure out what button to press to stop, we'll see you uh, next time.